Good day, everybody. Once again, we are back together and looking at uh, uh, probability still. And this time we're going to be looking at contingency diagrams. And of course, if you are new to the channel, welcome. And uh, just consider hitting that subscribe button and so that you can be part of the family. And um, of course, for those of you who uh, need assistance with mathematics or physical science, we've got our classes that are currently running uh, for those uh, that are upgrading and for those that are in metric, uh, you can always just uh, uh, consider just registering and uh, our email address is info at mlungesinkosi.co.za. All right, so we are going to be looking at a contingency diagram today. And uh, what I wanted to do, I just picked out a question and um, it is uh, as follows. It says in a particular school, we've got learners that are supposed to choose between three home languages. Right, so we've got Isizulu, English, and Afrikaans, right? So they say a group of learners, uh, metric learners, are taken, and amongst the male learners, 20 take English, okay? And we've got 20 that take Isizulu, and we've got 10 that take Afrikaans, okay? And they say amongst the female learners, we've got uh, 35 that take English, uh, 15 that take Isizulu, and 20 Afrikaans, okay? So first of all, we're supposed to draw a two-way contingency diagram and calculate the probabilities. Now, whenever you draw a contingency diagram, the first thing that you're going to look at is what are, are, are the elements that you're going to look at, okay? And of course, the questions usually serve as a good guiding uh, line. Uh, look at this. They're, they're looking for the probability of finding a male learner. So this has to do with gender. That's one of the elements. And in this case, we've got um, another one where they're looking for um, a female learner that takes Isizulu. So it means that gender as well as home language would be your, um, uh, your element. So in this case, let's just draw a contingency diagram. Okay, we'll try to make it as neat as possible. Okay, so what I would have first in my uh, column Okay, let's have uh, male learners. Uh, let's have female. Okay. And let's have a total over there. All right, so I'm going to first draw that. And then let's have our languages over here, as well as our totals. So our first language, we said, okay, that's English. If that's Isizulu, okay, and that would be Afrikaans, okay. All right, and of course, that would be our total over there. All right, now let's try and populate our table as much as we can. So um, for the male learners, they said to us we've got uh, male learners, we've got 20 that take English, 20 Isizulu and 10 Afrikaans. So that's 20, 20, and 10. 20 English, 20 Isizulu, and 10 Afrikaans, right? So that would mean that the total of male learners, uh, th th therefore, would be uh, 50, right? So let's look at the females. So we've got, amongst the female learners, we've got 35 that take English, 15 Isizulu, and 20 Afrikaans. So that's 35, 15, and 20. So that would be 35, 15, and 20 in this case, right? So in this case, that would mean that we've got a total of 70 learners. And now let's look at uh, the total number of those that are taking English, male and female. That would be 55 in total. If I consider... Uh, those that are taking a Sizulu, that would be 20 plus 15, that would be 35, okay, in total. And those that are taking Afrikaans, it's the 10 plus the 20, that would be 30 in total. And as a result, you know, if we add all of that, whether you add horizontally or you add vertically, we're supposed to get the same answer, right? So if I take 55 plus 35, uh, that would definitely give me 90, plus 30, that would give me 120. And of course, if I take 50 plus 70, that would also give me 120. So it means 
that we've got a total of 120 learners. Right, now that's the way that you would approach your contingency diagram. Very easy and simple and straightforward. Now let's go to the questions. They say, well, what is the probability of finding a male learner? So it doesn't matter what, what language they are doing, right? In this case, we're looking at the probability of finding a male learner. So I'm going to say, I'm going to just designate male uh, 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 with M, right? So the probability of finding a male learner. So how many males do we have, right? We've got a total of 50 males out of 120 learners. So our probability in this case would be 50 over 120. So I'm just going to draw my calculator over there. So that's 50 divided by 120. And in this case, uh, you can express this as a, you know, as a percentage. Um, obviously, you do that by multiplying by 100. Okay. Uh, you can express that as a percentage. That gives me about 41.67%. Uh, okay. Uh, alternatively, okay, we had, when we just express it as a fraction, that's 5 over 12. Okay. Or if you wanted to express it as a percentage, we said you multiply that by 100. So uh, in this case, that was 41.67%. Okay, right. So that's the probability of finding a male learner. Right, now let's go to the next one. So they say to us, uh, the probability of a female learner, okay, uh, that takes Isizulu, all right? So we go to our table. So it means now we're looking for, uh, so that was A and this is B. We're looking for a female learner, okay? So female learner that does Isizulu, it means the probability of finding a female and Isizulu, right? So it means that's female and Isizulu. So I'm just going to designate that with I, okay? Uh, so let's go to our contingency diagram. So for the female learners that does Isizulu, so that is the number there, right? So that's 15 learners out of 120. So that would be 15 over 120. Okay, so 15 divided by 120. And uh, that would give us 1 over 8. Okay. As I did say, if you want to, you can also express that as a percentage. You just simply multiply that number by 100. See, it's very easy when you've got a contingency diagram. Uh, it's uh, actually the information is right in front of you, right? So uh, the next question, they say the probability of a male learner that does not take English, okay? So if someone does not take English, they are taking, obviously, Isizulu, or they are taking um, uh, Afrikaans, right? So we're saying we're taking the probability of a male learner and not uh, English, right? Remember, they say that does not take English. So that would be not English. So all we simply do, we're going to take... Where are the ones that are male? Okay, so in this case, that does not take English. It's the Isizulu and the ones that are taking Afrikaans. So that would be 20 males plus the 10 that are taking Afrikaans divided by a total of 120 learners. And in this case, that would be 120. So that would be 30 over, <coughs> sorry, 120. And in this case, we get 1 over 4, or you can just simply say 25% to express it as a percentage. All right. And in this case, um, uh, alternatively, in fact, let me just uh, show you. Uh, we could have taken, you know, uh, um, in this case, it would be 1 minus the males that are actually taking English. So you could have actually said, uh, in this case, that would be uh, 1 minus the probability of being uh, male and 
you take English. And in this case, remember, that would be 1 minus, in this case, the probability of a male that takes English, that's 20 over uh, 120 uh, um, uh, in this case. So um, what you would actually have in this case would be 1 minus 20 over 120. Okay, uh, that's 20 over 120. Okay. Oh, no, actually, that's that. No, no, no. Actually, you wouldn't go that route because uh, remember, that's the probability of male and English. In this case, we wanted it's the not is just on the English part. OK, yeah. So maybe this wouldn't be uh, such a, uh, you know, the direction to go. Right. Uh, but you do you do understand the, the approach that I've taken. Right now, the last one. Uh, which I really want you to pay attention to. Uh, quite an interesting question. They say, determine whether gender and home language are independent events. Now, ladies and gents, please keep in mind, whenever we consider uh, independent events, we say, well, how do, you how do you check that events are independent, right? So what we normally say is that, well, for independent events, please uh, remember this. When you take the probability of, I'm just making an example here, the probability of A and B, right, should be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B, okay? So if I just take one of them, you know, um, let's say, for argument's sake here, what if I took the probability of being male and English, right? Let's check that first. Will it be equal to the probability of being male multiplied by the probability of doing English in this case? Uh, if it doesn't, then we know that it is not a, an, a, a dependent, I, I mean, a, yeah, it, it would not be an independent event, right? So let's take the probability of doing of a male doing English. So in this case, that would be 20, okay, over the 120. So in this case, that would be 20 over 120. Um, so that would be 20 over 120. That would give us... Um, yeah, in fact, let's express it in decimal form. That would be 1 over 6, right? Um, so that would be 1 over 6. So what do we do in this case? I would say, well, the probability of being male doing English, that's 1 over 6. But let's check now. What would be the probability of being male multiplied by the probability of doing English in this case? So the probability of finding a male in the school that would be, how many males do we have? 50 out of the 120, right? So that would be 50 over 120 multiplied by the probability of just learners who are doing English. Uh, learners who are doing English, that's 55 out of a total of 120. Okay, uh, so that's 55 over 120. And of course, what you can simply do is uh, just calculate that so that's 50 um, um, so that's 50 over 120 okay divided by um, so that would be 55 over 120 so in this case you just simply say uh, what I get there yeah uh, a very so that's 55 over 288 right so that's the probability that I get what can you conclude from this well the probability of being male and doing English is definitely not equal to the probability of male multiplied by the probability of doing English okay uh, and, and by the way, uh, I want you to remember, why is this the case? Okay. Um, remember, this is the case because, uh, you know, when you take uh, independent events, um, if you uh, remember when you, you know, 
especially when we did our, our um, you know, uh, our Venn diagrams, right? So in this case, whenever we've got independent events, we know that, uh, uh, by the way, there's no intersection between them, right? So the probability of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the two would actually become zero, right? Uh, right, so in this case, when we want to prove that uh, it's independent events, so we know in this case that the probab if it is independent events, so these two would be equal. But in this case, what is it proving? Because they are not equal, it means that the events are not independent. Okay, so these are not independent. All right. Okay, and that is how the cookie crumbles. I hope this uh, exercise has been good. All right, so we're just going to do probably just one last video on um, um, probability. And of course, we're going to close this. Uh, we'll follow later on, uh, perhaps with past exam questions, uh, you know, picked out from specific exams. But for now, I just want to leave this lesson here and I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.